Well, Scott, you've stated before that the entire world of hunting, every faction of it, is under a daily assault by animal rights activists and anti-hunting people, anti-gun people. And one of the controversial issues in some parts of hunting is the baiting of wildlife, whether it be deer, bears, birds, or whatever. In some states it's legal, in the state right next door it's not. And I guess there's different reasons for different states' laws and things. But, you know, you can't be hypocritical about it as hunters where, uh, and say that a person's a bad person for hunting over bait where it is legal and where it is working in those states, and particularly like on bears. People think bears are just this little fuzzy, pretty thing and stuffed animal you lay on your couch and stuff. But unlike a deer that if he smells you or sees you're going to run off, a bear might do something to you, eat you, particularly when they get overpopulated situations. And in most places, with the exception of western states where you might be able to see bears out foraging in the open and spot and stalk them, you'd never be able to kill a bear unless you baited them in 90% of the range because of where they live is so thick. Well, this whole baiting thing does go state by state and, and sometimes species to species. You don't hear people baiting elk, typically, food plots maybe, but, or alfalfa fields, but you bait bears and you bait deer and different pigs, what have you. And it, to me, it seems like it's pretty much the same as the crossbow conversation, the release conversation, the mechanical broadhead conversation. If it's legal, number one, and you prefer to do it, you choose to do it, and you have fun doing it that way, then do it. But there are people that say, well, we're 100% fair chase, 100% wild, and we, don't, we won't ever hunt in a high fence. Oh, we'll never do that. Well, and they may also say, well, that includes not baiting. Well, that's good, that's fine, if that's the way you want to hunt. But if you're inclined to say, no, I enjoy the advantage, or to me it's an advantage to hunt over bait, get the corn bag, there's nothing wrong with that. If it's legal, I think, why not? You know, and there's some parts of it, you look in the states where baiting has been legal, Texas, Kentucky, different ones you can go Kansas. on and on. It's not like they're, killing off all their deer because it's made easier and things. Matter of fact, most states have an assault on female deer in most senses because of car crash collisions and crop depredation and things like that. So if you can use baiting in those situations as a management tool to bring these deer that you want to take from the herd to bring your numbers more in check, why not use that? I grew up where you couldn't bait. In Minnesota, we don't, we've never been able to, to bait deer or anything. And in uh, Iowa, you can't bait deer. So the states that I hunted, uh, South Dakota, some of the states that I hunted early on, I, I was unfamiliar with it until recent years. And then we started to hunt some of these states and, and they put bait out there and I thought, eh, I was a little bit, eh, I don't know if I want to sit over bait or whatever. But where it's legal, um, I have no issue with it because it does work really well. It uh, um, I had a young son coming up, he's 17 now, but his years when he was 12 to 17, he wanted a lot of action, wanted to see a lot of deer, and uh, baiting provides that opportunity. There's a kind of a flow of deer coming in to check, check the corn pile out or whatever. So, I mean, it, it, I, I think it has its place, and if it's legal, I don't have an issue with it. Well, you know, some states are always on the cutting edge and fighting, and legislation is whether it allow their hunters to bait, not to bait, or only bait this time or this much. And I know there's different reasons for some of these game departments, mainly disease, says can come from that. And Mike, you, you've got more experience on what's good and bad for deer yourself. How do you feel on that? You know, I, I think, you know, baiting, the, the disease issue is the same with, with any livestock. If there is disease out there uh, that's transferable in nose-to-nose -nose contact or through urine or, or uh, just general contact, a feeding area is definitely a place where you're you have the potential for that but I would question what disease are you most concerned about the only really relevant disease that I'm aware of and I'm no disease expert by any means but um, TB is proven you know it passes through nose-to-nose -nose contact so from a standpoint of that particular disease if that disease is in a state it's very understandable on why you wouldn't want baiting or groups of deer feeding out of in close contact because you're just going to encourage the transmission of that disease. 
Um, there's, there's other things like EHD was a big to do this year. It cycles through different parts of the country almost annually. EHD really doesn't baiting that's not going to impact the effect of EHD to my yeah to my knowledge the deer aren't giving it to each other it's more about you now if you put your bait pile near a bunch of muddy water yeah maybe you're bringing a group in but that's I think the bigger thing on the on the baiting issue you know you mentioned we're under attack and I would question who we're under attack from because again what I find is it's more about hunters bickering amongst ourselves with the baiting issue than it is somebody from HSUS coming in and saying, hey, you shouldn't be hunting over corn. They just think you shouldn't be hunting. A lot of times it's hunters making judgments or um, opinions of other hunters' abilities based on bait. And what I've seen here, we can't bait outside on our free range stuff, but in our high fence properties, you know, we can. And we've got an archery only facility where it's just bow hunters. And we've got a lot of guys draw for Iowa for hunting outside. And there is, a, there is a considerable difference that you cannot ignore. The ratio of deer that are wounded out on the free range where there's no baiting versus the ratio of the deer that are shot over bait. Because if they're standing around a, a feeder or a bait pile, or even, even in a food plot helps, they're standing sedentary normally. They're, they're eating, they're feeding, they're maybe chasing a little, but out on the free range, they're passing, you're hunting a travel corridor. Well, they're, they're moving, so you either gotta yell at them, grunt, a lot of people will grunt, you know, to stop a deer, but what's the deer do when you grunt at him? Turns, Turns around and looks at you. And jump the string. Yeah, and shoot so the arrow at close range. So there's some other benefits besides just, there's also just from a standpoint of, of hunters doing an efficient job. Absolutely. You know, there's, there's other advantages to baiting, and I don't think that it necessarily makes it unfair. It's to your point, it's what you find challenging and acceptable. In some people's minds, you're actually in the deer baiting business. There are people that think food plots is a norm, another form of baiting animals to come somewhere to eat and beg to differ with them. But then again, you also sell attractants. So I know that you find yourself right square in the middle of this debate in products you sell across the country. Yeah, the, the food plot versus baiting, you know, could take up the whole 30 minute show today. But, um, you, know, my, you know, my position on it is if it's legal in the state, I think the same as everybody here. It's, uh, you know, I support it. I've hunted over bait and had a great time. You see a lot of deer, a lot of things going on during the rut, you know, when the does are coming in, obviously you start getting some chasing going on. And it's a productive way of hunting. So, you know, a traditionalist may think, you know, well, you're not a real hunter. You're not hunting over a, you know, a, a trail, you know, where you can only see nine yards. But uh, whatever, to each his own. As far as food plots versus baiting, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you're comparing um, apples and watermelons. They're just two totally different things. Again, I'm not here to bash baiting. Because, again, I support it if it's legal in the state. And we sell some products that would be considered bait that people use for that purpose. Very effective. But a food plot's a much better choice, in my opinion. Uh, the reason being is generally bait is put out a few weeks prior to season or a few days up until the person feels this tag or the season goes out and typically it's over with. That person has drawn a lot of deer, probably, into this area and shuts the food off as food sources naturally are declining as you go into winter. So, you know, you get into that issue again. I'm not trying to bash baiting, but I'm just trying to present the difference between bait and food plot. Mm -hmm. A food plot does require more effort, does require more money, um, um, but you spread the deer out more with a food plot, you provide a lot more tonnage, you provide a lot more consistent food source longer throughout the year. Um, food plots are legal to every state, whereas baiting is not, and I think that has a little bit to do with it. Uh, nutritionally, you know, I think a, a food plot is just, you know, it's just a better choice. You're going, you're going to get you know, a more balanced diet, I think, from uh, whether it be energy, protein, uh, uh, and the list goes on and on. It just extends the availability of food to the animal versus a few weeks of bait. Again, not bashing bait, because I've hunted over, we sell products that are that way, but food plots are a far superior option, in my opinion. You know, it's ironic, over the weeks we talk about these different topics. At the end of the day, the four of us have talked about the controversy within our own ranks. And, and I hope that this rack focus, if it does one thing to the people that might watch this, is that we realize we have a responsibility to our sport and, and perhaps we could just be a little more respectful of the other guy's opinion, the other guy's interest or his option or his selection or his discretion. 
and that we stop some of the some of this dissension that's within our ranks. You know, Mike said, well, the traditionalist doesn't think you should do this, and well, and certain guys should think you shouldn't do that, and certain people don't believe you ought to be allowed to do this. If it's legal, respect the legality and the preference or the choice to do it. We fight more amongst ourselves, and I say fight, but we critique, we cause dissension, more so, I think sometimes, than we get attacked, at least at this level, by anti-hunters and anti-gunners. And they're united. They're sitting back and laughing and saying, I, I think you're right, I think you're right. But everything, there, there's something cool, especially about a bow hunter, they're an independent person, that enjoys their independence and is, likes to hunt by themselves a lot of times and all that. That's a great character and a great personality and it lends to being opinionated. But I think we, we ought to be, with our opinionation, we ought to be also entitled to a little intelligence and say with that, let's have some respect and stop the infighting that we have within the ranks of hunting today. Makes no sense to me well, that's whatsoever. That everybody out there watching realize you're all on the same team. That's you know, it. and, and uh, there's no I in team that needs to be. It's all the passion as a hunter. Yeah. If you're having fun, you're not breaking the law, and you're enjoying yourself, you're out there in God's creation, you're hunting, you're fishing, you're hiking, whatever it might be, in this case, bow hunting, and you're doing what you enjoy doing. It's your passion, it's your sport, you feel it in deep inside of you. Why would you be critiqued by someone else that maybe doesn't share that or likes to do it a little different way? If you stop and think about that a little bit, that's, a, that's goofy. And we're doing that to ourselves. We have the responsibility to come together, not be so opinionated that we disperse ourselves and distract ourselves from the real threat here, which are the anti-hunters and the anti-gunners. And it comes, it comes in disguise. It doesn't matter if it's introductory introduction of predators into certain areas so you don't have hunting anymore, or if it's a legislative bill, stop hunting, stop guns. It comes in all different manner. But it's pretty easy for them because we're so darn fragmented that we can't even have a voice except for people like SCI, NRA, and these groups that we're members of. And we even want to fight about that. <laughs> so it's just amazing. We have to come together in today's world, in today's society, well, we're going to be, you know, as the saying goes, we've met the enemy and he is us. You know, we think about this a little bit. You know, let's come together, guys, and let's be hunters together, united, respecting each other. Amen. Yeah.